March 28th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, John chapter 19 of the New Testament. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged severely. The soldiers braided a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they clothed him in a purple robe. They came up to him again and again and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him repeatedly in the face. Again, Pilate went out and said to the Jewish leaders, Look, I am bringing him out to you so that you may know that I find no reason for an accusation against him. So Jesus came outside wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Look, here is the man. When the chief priests and their officers saw him, they shouted out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said, you take him and crucify him. Certainly, I find no reason for an accusation against him. The Jewish leaders replied, We have a law, and according to our law, he ought to die, because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard what they said, he was more afraid than ever, and he went back into the governor's residence and said to Jesus, Where do you come from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said, do you refuse to speak to me? Don't you know I have the authority to release you and to crucify you? Jesus replied, You would have no authority over me at all, unless it was given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of greater sin. From this point on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jewish leader shouted out, If you release this man, you are no friend of Caesar. Everyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat down on the judgment seat in the place called the Stone Pavement, Gabbatha in Aramaic. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, about noon. Pilate said to the Jewish leaders, Look, here is your king. Then they shouted out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked, Shall I crucify your king? The high priest replied, We have no king except Caesar. Then Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying his own cross, he went out to the place called the Place of the Skull, called in Aramaic Golgotha. There they crucified him, along with two others, one on each side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had a notice written and fastened to the cross, which read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Thus many of the Jewish residents of Jerusalem read this notice, because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the notice was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. Then the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Now when the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and made four shares, one for each soldier, and the tunic remained. Now the tunic was seamless, woven from top to bottom as a single piece. So the soldiers said to one another, Let's not tear it, but throw dice to see who will get it. This took place to fulfill the scripture that says, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they threw dice. So the soldiers did these things. Now standing beside Jesus' cross were his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. So when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing there, he said to his mother, Woman, look, here is your son. He then said to his disciple, Look, here is your mother. From that very time, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, Jesus, realizing that by this time everything was completed, said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was there, so they put a sponge soaked in sour wine on a branch of hyssop and lifted it to his mouth. When he had received the sour wine, Jesus said, it is completed. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. 
Then, because it was the day of preparation, so that the body should not stay on the crosses on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was an especially important one, the Jewish leaders asked Pilate to have the victim's legs broken and the bodies taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the two men who had been crucified with Jesus, first the one and then the other. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and blood and water flowed out immediately. And the person who saw it has testified, and his testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, so that you also may believe. For these things happen so that the scripture would be fulfilled, not a bone of his will be broken. And again, another scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, because he feared the Jewish leaders, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he went and took the body away. Nicodemus, the man who had previously come to Jesus at night, accompanied Joseph carrying a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about 75 pounds. Then they took Jesus' body and wrapped it with the aromatic spices and strips of linen cloth, according to Jewish burial customs. Now at the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden was a new tomb where no one had yet been buried. And so because it was a Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they placed Jesus' body there. God, I keep repeating over and over again in my heart and my head the part of the mockery, the thorns, not, not the kind that we're familiar with like on roses, but long, spiky, sharp thorns were then curved into a crude crown set upon my Savior's head. A robe that they got from somewhere placed around his shoulders and they not only began to beat him so that the thorns pushed into his skull and blood dripped down his face and onto the royal robe but they mocked him verbally over and over again and then in this crude costume where he is bloodied and bruised. He's taken and put in front of the Jewish high priest. And they say, away with him. Pilate says, shall I crucify your king? And they denounce him once again. We have no king except Caesar. Caesar, a common man. So as Jesus went to the cross, as an innocent man and died a criminal's death, I think not only about the incredible pain he went through, pain that truth be told at that time any person who was going to crucifixion would go through similar types of flogging and pain and the part of the crucifixion but on top of all of this having to go through a criminal's death as a purely innocent person he also took on the sins of the world. All the sins of the past, all the sins currently happening, all the sins of the future, all my sins that I committed today. And had to endure his father turning away from him. Because of me. God, if I were to start adding some of this up, Let's say that I only sin once a day, which is not the truth. But let's say I only sin once a day and 
We'll do an average lifespan of 60 years. And we multiply that by all the people currently living. Currently living in the world. Not all of the people in the past, not all the people in the future, but just the sins currently. We get a number that is so incredibly large. 175 trillion sins just for the people currently living and that's if we only sin once a day could probably add quite a few onto mine god I don't want your son's death to be in vain I don't want Jesus suffering to be taken lightly in my life or lightly in the lives of the people listening to this. I was just listening to a sermon by John Piper. And he said it is a strange and terrible perversion of the gospel. To say that since Jesus suffered for me, therefore I don't have to suffer. I can be comfortable and prosperous. The stumbling block of the cross is removed if we say he became homeless that I might have the finest of homes. He was rejected by men, that I might be admired among men. He lived in poverty, that I might live in luxury. He endured suffering, that I might enjoy ease. But Jesus taught just the opposite. If any man would come after me, let him take up his cross daily and follow me. If we suffer with him, we shall be glorified with him. Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. So God, I pray today for everyone listening to the video, to your words, that the words of what your son, Jesus Christ, did for us, and what you did, to sacrifice your only son, that those words would just melt into our hearts and change us from the inside out. That, that incredible love that you have for us, that you would be willing to do that for us, that that would come out and seep into our lives and seep into other people's lives. That the lives right now, when it be a reflection of the world, that people wouldn't be able to look at our lives and say they obviously worship Caesar. They obviously worship the world. But instead, that they are able to look at our lives and say they obviously worship God. Because their life glorifies him. God, as we go through this holy week. Let us be intentional in our path that we walk with Jesus. Let us understand the true cost, not just for your son, which was incredible. Not just for you, which was unfathomable. But also the cost of giving up our gods here on earth. And then let us take up our cross and follow you. In your son's name we pray. Amen.